All right, hello and welcome everybody. Um, this is going to be another Infinity Kingdom guide uh, on a build. We're going to talk about fire. We're going to talk fire dual mage. Um, this build can be used as a quite cheap or even in a free-to-play version as a main march. But uh, the main focus on on for this video and uh, my purpose with this build is running it as a secondary march. Uh, why? Simply because uh, fire is extremely flexible. You can run it with a variety of different passives and it will still perform very well. We can run fire reliably as a dual mage, meaning we need zero physical damage passives, leaving all the best skills for our main, whether that be earth, lightning, holy, whatever you fancy. Um, fire is an excellent choice for secondary team so obviously you know your main march is the most important march uh, at all and i'm gonna do this in a main march version as well and when we get into the actual build the passives we load on i'm gonna do kind of this is the absolute uh, best passives you can have which would be the ones you would main right uh, but i'm also gonna do these are the secondary passives so if you run it as a secondary team um, these are the passives you're gonna do for uh, for you guys uh, who are running physical as a main march this fire dual mage is gonna be a very very powerful secondary team if you are not running a physical damage focused main then this might not be for you then you'd probably be better off either running a lightning and earth hybrid or the fire um, with a Seon version, uh, maybe even Bethany. But for all of you with physical damage mains, this is a very, very powerful, might be the, in my, in my opinion, one of the absolute best secondary teams you can have. As for the precise, uh, you know, setup of Immortals, I'm personally running Baldwin in it because I like the magic debuff and he does uh, quite some quite an insane uh, burst damage you can get a bit of RNG lock on him meaning that uh, uh, sometimes your secondary team can take out other guys mains if you get lucky on on the ultimate procs uh, alternative uh, magic uh, mages uh, such as Merlin for instance uh, deals more consistent damage which has its upsides as well as its downsides uh, I prefer Baldwin for the debuff and the RNG but you can certainly make this work with uh, with Merlin or some some other uh, magic immortal. Now, if you're meeting facing a lot of other waters, which fires weak against, Cleo could be a good choice as well. Um, another thing that's added by not doing Baldwin is that it becomes a free-to-play build. You know, Trajan is all obviously not free-to-play, but he can be replaced by Hippolyta. And in that case, we have a completely free-to-play version using William, Hippo, Merlin, slash Cleo, and Wu. That's the free-to-play version. I'm gonna build that out as well as the build's gonna be the same. Um, you also have the slightly better version, uh, but which is a uh, pay-gated, pay pay-walled, pay pay sorry, um, of William, Trajan, Baldwin, and Wu. That's the one I'm using, um, but you know, many things can work, especially with fire. This build will perform extremely well against pretty much everything. Uh, water mains can be a struggle. Uh, shadow it does quite quite well against. Um, uh, sometimes you're able to even beat uh, stronger shadows with the fire, simply because the burst damage and the fact that you're kind of mutant. Himiko's uh, control abilities by having two mages, not just one. Uh, um, obviously, it loses quite hard to Holy. It does not do very well against pure Earths. And uh, uh, if you're up against Holy or pure Earth, uh, I'd advise you do a Khan version of this fire build. You can do that, if, especially if you main it, but also if you have Khan spare for your secondary team. Maybe you're running. Uh, Kin, Sino, Barker, Alex, Hybrid for main like I do 
well then uh, then an Akan fire can be very very powerful right that's the immortals that's kind of we have a lot of leeway we have a lot of things to choose from but the build itself is going to be pretty much the same let's get dive a bit into how it actually works it's uh, it's a pretty simple setup um, it revolves around pumping big magic damage from Wu and Baldwin whatever you got back there and uh, meaning that Trajan and William they provide buffs you know, insane crit buffs and you're gonna load them out with auras and blessings and graces utility they're pretty much gonna be uh, gonna be utility tank dummies that just buff your backline to deal massive damage Okay, so for uh, the Tower of Knowledge passives, you know, there's a bunch of different builds and versions. And like I said in the beginning, I'm going to start by doing sort of uh, what would I do if this was actually my main. Um, then we're going to do, uh, you know, alternative passives to some of the STS stuff that you might not have flying around. I'm going to show what I run as a secondary team in, uh, in synergy with my own uh, wind earth hybrid main um, as well as uh, a few other pointers. So um, to begin with, uh, if you run it with like, let's imagine you have every tower of knowledge um, passive available to you, then this is what you want to do. You want to run Empress Wu, Annihilation, Death Breath, Chase. That's going to give her max procs on Chase. Uh, you need a uh, heavy uh, crit artifact, you know, one that boosts her crit chance, uh, because that will enable her to, to consistently proc uh, Chase on cooldown um, with a Death Breath and Annihilation. She's going to deal massive damage if you build that right on Baldwin you want to do either uh, root or fire nova fire nova has slightly reduced utility in a fire march um, but it can still work quite well root is a personal favorite of mine uh, I know many people disagree with me but I'm gonna stick to my guns and say I really like root it is quite a lot more RNG I mean sometimes it's not gonna do much but when it procs it, it makes a huge difference uh, so I would do root but other people might want to do fire nova either way uh, you want to combine that with toxic nova and concentration we're running a magic damage artifact on Baldwin you know of want to get the crit bonus because we're doing a fire uh, weakness crit march but the uh, the top uh, role you want to have magic damage and not crit chance uh, this is because we're building him for pure magic damage you know we're not running chase here we're not going for consistent crit procs if you can uh, spell disintegration is uh, an absolutely massive skill to have uh, you can run it on Baldwin, or you can actually run it on one of your frontliners just for the debuff. Depends on how loaded you are. Uh, likewise, if you have Storm Eye available to you, you want to swap uh, one of these, one of the Novas out, and do uh, and do Storm Eye. Uh, with Storm Eye, I would do Concentration Storm Eye Root, simply because Root uh, has. Uh, higher value in synergy with storm Eye. but more on that later because that's actually what i run for now what you want to know is that um, you're building a ball wind for massive uh, magic damage and uh, in case he uh, takes a lot of damage because sometimes you're going to be faced with enemies that are uh, bursting down backline as quickly and uh, you can do alternative builds where you go absolute blessing of defense uh, sorry absolute defense um, maybe fight master something like that more on that in the alternatives for William you want to run fight and will energy suppression and rage blessing William's pretty set I mean you're likely gonna have all these three skills you may not have energy suppression some people use that for mains some people don't uh, in case you do not you can swap it out for a, an offensive version uh, with adrenaline rush instead you're given higher uptime uptime on your crit buffs 
or if you're taking massive damage and want to survive a bit longer to secure uh, your backliner's crit, you can do uh, resist against, you know, water mage um, teams, or you can do oaken if you have that. If those are not available, misleading or malice are excellent choices as well. For Trajan, you want to do weakness, blessing of defense, or resist, and you want to do blessing of war. Weakness is a must have. If you run a fire team, you always want to give that team weakness. If you're not able to give your second team weakness, then you've got to do something other than fire. I mean, do a lightning, do something else. Uh, fire needs weakness. Um, as for the blessing of war and blessing of defense, uh, if you're using those uh, in your main or elsewhere, you can swap them for resist, oaken, misleading, malice. That leads us into, well, that covers sort of the, the best case scenarios. Um, now let's take a look at what I'm actually doing. Um, I'm running this uh, earth wind uh, hybrid as my main march. That means that the Blessing of Defense, Blessing of War, Death Breath, Oaken Guard, off the table. I'm using those in my main march to secure uh, that they are as powerful as they can be. So that leaves me with having to pick some of the alternatives that we discussed before for my secondary team. Meaning uh, I'm, good, I'm running uh, Adrenaline Rush because I like the offensive version. I like to have my fire team pump. Uh, pure offense and I appreciate it being a bit RNG as well because you know it's a fire march uh, if you get lucky you can kill the main if you're not lucky well then it's your secondary team anyway um, so I'm doing adrenaline rush on uh, on William instead of uh, the energy suppression Energy suppression is in turn swapped over to Trajan since uh, he's missing uh, two passive skills. No, I'm using Blessing of War, Blessing of Defense in my main, like I said. So we're going to use uh, Energy Suppression and Resist uh, on Trajan. That's my loadout anyway. Um, you should also be aware that I get enhanced value from both Brute and Fighting Will since I do have the Storm Eye um, Tower Knowledge passive unlocked from, uh, from the Conquest season. Uh, if you do not, you you know play around with it, see if either um, dual novas or something else is uh, superior. You know you might want to do either the nova instead of the stormite, or you could do a defensive version with uh, uh, with fight master or absolute defense. Anyway, um, that's you know in case you do not have stormite, you kind of. The simple change is moving, uh, you know, storm is obviously not there, so you're moving fire nova in there. If you get hammered, you know, if you get slammed by enemy teams, do absolute defense, something like that in there instead. Now, last version I want to do mention for you, you know, before we move on to the free to play version, uh, is a max RNG build. Um, you can run this, uh, you know, we've got a lot of a crit, especially on our Wu. We've got you know, William, we've got Trajan, we've got Weakness, we've got Fire Dragon, we've got a crit artifact. You know, we're really pumping, we're getting like 60-70% crits, meaning very consistent uptime on Energy Burst and Chase, and enough crit chance that Annihilation uh, by itself actually becomes a reliable proc, you know, the less crit chance you have the the more damage instances you need so usually we run want to run two damage passives with chase to make sure it procs but with enough critical hit we can we can actually make sure we just do one but obviously it uh, it is more rng since you do rely on annihilation to get consistent crits if you get unlucky it falls entirely apart but when it works, it pumps uh, even more damage than the other version because we're having our Empress Wu consistently maxing her energy bar while proccing Chase uh, passively. It's also just a lot of fun and I mean, like I said, it's a personal preference. I like to go, go hard on RNG because it makes some fun results and sometimes. Uh, but if you're not really into that, you can do uh, one of the more consistent versions. Uh, 
uh, I will just reinforce and emphasize the point that uh, this does require a very well crafted and well rolled uh, artifact. You need a crit rate up front and you preferably want a crit rate or crit value as a secondary role as well. Um, if you do not have either of these, then you're not going to get uh, enough procs. Anyway, those were sort of what we threw through like four or five different versions and a bunch of alternatives for fire. I think that sets you up quite well into uh, into mixing your secondary team. If you have questions, you know, reach out on Discord and we can talk about it. It is quite a lot to uh, to have this many alternatives and this many versions flying around. I will, however, add one more. Because I did promise you all a free-to-play version. Uh, this has been asked of me. Um, and I made one. Basically, what you want to do is run Merlin and Hippolyta instead of Baldwin and Trajan. That makes it an entirely free-to-play uh, setup. And one which you can run with the exact same passives as we've been doing before. The only exception being that um, Energy Burst can actually work very well on Hibbeluza. So if you have enough crit, you might consider that. Other than that, the builds and the reasoning behind why we use each passive, precisely the same. So go through the passives we discussed before and just load them up on Merlin and Hibbeluza and you've got yourself a very, very strong free-to-play secondary team. Right. So these were all versions that sort of are available to me with my Earthwind Hybrid as a main. Your main march might differ, um, in which case you're going to have to swap out some of the non-key skill uh, passives. Uh, we talked about it and we did a couple versions, but I just want to re-emphasize a couple points, you know, sort of the logic behind which skills to to swap around as you adjust to fit with with your main. So first of all, weakness, you want to have that in here at all cost. It needs to be in the fire team. If you can't run it here, don't run it. Um, make sure you've got Chase active on Empress Wu and that it's matched with preferably two strong proc passives. Uh, this means many damage instances and uh, many chances for crits but you also need a crit boot boost artifact with it uh, if you get to massive levels of crit you can try the rng version but only at massive crit rates you can opt for a more defensive playstyle if your mages back are dying too quickly if you're faced with other burst setups that do this better than yours then uh, you can try and fix it by running absolute defense and or fighting master they can be uh, quite handy to exchange for root or other passives on your backline making sure you retain troop count uh, is a key, it can be key against some setups energy burst in general can be used if you have you know enough crit rate like i said on Woo, you really need a lot of crit, um, but running the free-to-play version with Hippolyta makes a lot of sense. If you're using uh, Blessing of War, Blessing of Defense in your main, I'm mean, uh, sorry, if you're not using Blessing of War or Blessing of Defense in your, in your main, then they are very powerful in fire. These blessings do proc the fire dragon and provides extremely high value to the fire team uh, in addition to just synergizing well with the burst setup uh, playstyle that we're going for here. Like I'd rather have Blessing of War and Blessing of Defense than most skills in here. Stuff like Adrenaline Rush, Resist, Fight and Will, stuff like that. I'd actually swap that out for, uh, for either of these blessings. Um, do be aware the fight and will with Stormeye has greater value. Leading me into my last point, if you do have Stormeye or Spell Disintegration available, then uh, you want to swap those in, uh, either with Root or... Uh, sorry, with uh, Anova or uh, 
Adrenaline Rush, one of those. Uh, beware that with Stormeye, Root and the Fighting World becomes higher value and you want to retain them over Blessing and Defense as well. That was it for the Fire uh, Dual Mage Guide. I know that this might have been a bit more clustered than some of the other setups. I tried to sort of show how many different versions you can actually do. Um, because fire is a very versatile setup, you know, as long as you stick to the base principles of of doing crit based burst procs and boosting, you know, running blessings, boosting your your sort of fighting capabilities in the early section of the fight, because that's where fire is strong. You know, you get the ball rolling quickly, you get the enemy down and troop count quickly, and then you sort of just watch the snowball run down the mountain and grow right um, don't don't sort of try and build a big sustained setup out of fire you'd be better off something else you know, as long as you understand the logic behind why we're doing what then you can make some of these choices on your own but um, yeah that's it I'm gonna leave you with a screen of some of the uh, versions we've been talking about you can take inspiration from these reach out to me on discord uh, there's a decent amount of players in there who have uh, who have a lot of experience and are happy to share. It. Join us. As always, please do subscribe to the channel. I consistently release new content here on the IK channel and on the official IK Wiki website. Links are in the description. On these channels, you can find guides from everything in IK from events to talents, passives, finished builds and game mechanics. With that I'm gonna leave you and as always thank you for watching and see you for the next one.